Hello everyone, welcome to Reach Goals. Today I am going to talk about how to design a system like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger. And here, before going into the detailed system design with an architectural diagram, I want to talk about what are the use cases we are going to cover. I want to talk about four important use cases. The first one is authentication. The second one is one-on-one -on -one message and also want to make sure user is online. We will also talk about send receipt as well as the read receipt. I will also talk about the group messaging which is a very important interview question as well. And finally, I will talk about sending multimedia messages. At the end, I will talk about how to have a database or schema for this and I will also talk about how to scale like a WhatsApp that is sending billion messages, right? Let's see how the authentication works in case of WhatsApp, right? So we need a user table which has the information like user ID, the phone number, the device ID, the registration time, last seen and the node. The node is nothing but a chat server connected for a specific user or specific customer, right? As a first step, what you do over here is you insert a SIM card or you might be downloading a WhatsApp from the App Store or Google Play Store, right? So what happens here is your WhatsApp will connect to the backend server to see if your device is already registered or not, right? If it is already registered, you are good and you can start sending the messages. Let's say if you are a first time user and if your system is not getting registered into the WhatsApp server, what happens here is the WhatsApp from the backend server will send you a code as an SMS. Now you enter the code into the device and you start submitting, correct? As soon as you submit, what happens here is the information like user ID, the phone number, the device ID, the registration time, the last scene are getting entered into the database at the backend server. At the same time, WhatsApp will allocate a node for your device that is called as a pre-allocation or provisioning the node, right? That means you will always be connecting to the certain node at, at, at any point of time to get your chat information or to start communicating with your friends and family, right? Before going into the use case 2, which is one-on-one -on -one message, I want to make sure we all remember these seven key points. The first one is a database. Here I am going to use a database as HBase which is deployed in Hadoop. I am not going to use RDBMS like MySQL. The reason I am not using MySQL is we don't want to have a transactions in the table. The other reason is HBase supports and performs very well in high volume random reads and write. The next one is it is very good in variable size data as well. right? The next thing is HBase is well suited for key value workloads and the sequencing with a timestamp. The sequencing is very important because you get a random message or different messages at different point of time and we want to sequence that and send it to user in certain cases, right? So that is why we need sequencing with respect to the timestamp. The HBase is deployed into the HDF infrastructure and it is highly scalable and distributed which is well suited for chat based applications as well, right? The second point to remember is long polling and the WebSocket. In case of this design, I am going to use the WebSocket, right? Let's understand what is long polling as well as the WebSocket. In case of long polling, client sends the request to the server and the server will send the response to the client as soon as it has a message to send back to the client, right? So that is called it is a long polling. Whereas in case of WebSocket, the client and server will have a mutual connection and the client can send a response to the server and the server also can send to the response by choosing the client. That is, that is kind of a two-way communication, right? So third point to remember here is the message sequencing. Let's say in case of a WhatsApp or in case of a Facebook Messenger, what happens is the user will send messages at different point of time and all these messages gets back into the queue. Now when it goes to the different user, it has to be sequenced, right? So that is why we need some kind of a timestamp to make sure all these messages are sequenced and it is sent to the different users, correct? So the fourth key point to remember is long sequencing of messaging. So in case of WhatsApp or in case of a Facebook Messenger, what happens is the sender sends a lot of messages to the receiver, correct? Now, if the receiver is offline, all these messages get stored in the database, right? As soon as the receiver comes online, he might be getting a lot of messages at single point of time, right? Now, if you are not making sure the pagination is covered in this area, the user message will get scattered, right? So you want to make sure the pagination is also covered in case of designing the chat applications like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, correct? So the fifth key point to remember here is DB optimization. In case of WhatsApp or in case of Facebook Messenger, billions of messages are transferred between the users, correct? So now if you want to make sure a database is performing well, you can introduce a cache server in front of the database so that you know the performance is improved and optimized. So the sixth key point to remember here is a load balancer, right? So the load balancer can be introduced at two locations in this design. One is 
if you have a multiple cache servers you can have a load balancer in front of that the second one is you can also have the load balancer between the user as well as between the chat servers the seventh point to remember over here is offline messages there is a little difference between the offline messages for whatsapp as well as for the facebook messenger in case of whatsapp what happens is as soon as the user receives the message the offline messages which are stored in the database is deleted or wiped out whereas in case of facebook messenger the offline messages are stored for further investigation as well as to maintain the historical data as well correct so here let's talk about how one to one message works with an architectural diagram let's take a case where the joe has to send a message to kim look into the number the joe's phone number starts with the number 98 and the kim's number starts with the 78 right now in order to do this design we need two important tables one is user table we already talked about that the primary thing that is the phone number the device id as well as the node which has been pre allocated for different users right in case of an offline message we have a table which has a phone number from and which has a phone number to and the message as well as the time stamp which is for sequencing right so let's see how this works now let's take a case where joe wants to send a message to the kim so what happens here is we already know there is a pre allocated server for them which is node 1 and node 2 correct if you look into the node 1 it does multiple operations out of that there are four important operations one is the node 1 acts as a web socket server that means it can connect to the client as well as the client can connect to the server right the second thing is it acts as a session server the reason we need to have a session server is we have to maintain the session of different users so that we can understand where they are at what point of time the third important thing is db connection all this node servers will have an ability to connect to the database at the back end right so that means we need to query the database at different point of time and pass the messages to different users based on the need correct let's say joe wants to send a message to the kim so as soon as they start their whatsapp application what happens here is the client application will connect to the database and figure out to which node it has to connect in case of here joe has to connect to the node 1 and kim has to connect to the node 2 right so now joe wants to send a message as hi to the kim so what happens here is joe will connect to the node 1 right so the node 1 as soon as it receives the message it will send an acknowledgement back to the joe that is how you see a great tick mark in your application saying that the message has reached the server so after the node 1 sends an acknowledgement to joe what it does is it stores the message into the database for offline communication as well as for historical data right so parallelly what node 1 does is it sends the message to the queue right so node 2 is already configured in such a way to receive messages from different node servers in this case it starts to receive the messages from the node 1 and what it does is it finally sends back to the kim right so kim is already configured or connected to the node 2 and there is an already a websocket which is existing over there and it is monitoring if there is any message coming into the kim or not correct So once the message reaches the Kim, it sends an acknowledgement. Watch the green line. It goes back to the node, and in node, in turn, sends back to the queue, and queue will send back to the original node, which is node one, and the message received communication is sent back to the Joe. That is how you see the blue color tick mark on your app, correct? So now let's say more number of users are using WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger. In this case, what we can do is you can keep on adding new nodes based on number of users getting added into the WhatsApp system, correct? So now let's see how offline messages works in case of WhatsApp, right? So let's take a case where Kim is offline for certain point of time. So now as soon as she comes online, she will go and connect to the node two because she's already all configured to connect into the node two, right? So now what node two does is it will go and connect to the database to see. if there is any offline messages now it looked into the offline message table and it figured out there are a lot of messages waiting for her correct so now what node 2 does is it takes all those data and connects back to or it sends back to the kim through the web socket communication so now let's talk about use case 3 which is group messaging right so if we want to talk about group messaging we need a table called group info table in this table we will have group id owner of the group we will also have two where we will have a list of users and we'll also have a creation time and group count the reason i have a group count is i want to make sure the number of in the number of users in the group are not exceeding beyond a limit correct so let's take a case where joe wants to send a group message right so now you have multiple users like joe mary and jim they are already connected to the different nodes like node 1 node 2 and node 3 based on their pre configurations 
So now Joe sends a message to the group ID 1. The message is something like good morning, right? Which is a very popular message, which is a very popular group message, correct? So now as soon as Joe starts his app, he already knows to which group he is going to send that, right? So your client already has an information about the group ID. Now he goes into that group and he sends some messages, good morning, right? So now it goes to the node 1 and node 1 in will turn connect to the database and it will figure out for this group ID who are the users. So for example, in case of group ID 1, it has gone and figured out the list of users are like, you know, starting from 788, 8, 8, 7, 8, and 78, right? Now, what happens here is it will go and store the messages in the backend database for offline messaging, right? As soon as it stores the message, it has already figured out list of users and it will go and constructs the queue messages and it will send to queues, right? So now there are different nodes waiting on the queue to get the message for themselves, right? So now it receives the messages and it directly sends to the different users like Mary and Jim based on the WebSocket configurations or WebSocket communication. So that is how group messaging works in case of WhatsApp, right? If you have any questions, you can put in the comment sections. I will be very happy to answer that. So here, let's talk about the use case four, which is multimedia messaging. So in case of multimedia messaging, the only extra thing we over here is the multimedia repository table. And we also have a repository location where we store the image file or we store the audio or video files, right? Let's see how it works. Let's say Joe wants to send a message to Kim with a multimedia message, right? So what happens here is the Joe in turn will connect to the node one because it is already pre-configured. So node one in turn does two operations. One is it stores the message into the database with informations like, you know, the ID, the from, to, and the URL of the media and what kind of a multimedia it is. It's an image or it's a video and it will also store the time. At the same time, the node one is configured to another HTTP server, the HTTP server which will go and upload the image or the multimedia information into the multimedia repository table, right? So here you have to note down the URL is in the multimedia repository table and the image or the multimedia information into a different storage location where we call as a multimedia repository, correct? So now parallelly what happens here is node one in turn will send that message to the queue. So queue is already configured in such a way it can send the messages to the different, different nodes waiting on it, correct? So the node 2 which is configured for the Kim will connect to the queue and it will get the message and it will immediately send back to Kim, right? So at this point of time, Kim has received only the URL of the multimedia message and not the multimedia itself. So Kim opens the system and she clicks the multimedia URL. As soon as she clicks the multimedia URL, it goes and connects to the multimedia repository. It downloads the image or any multimedia content into a system, right? Once it gets downloaded, what happens is the multimedia message is deleted in case of WhatsApp so that they don't want to store any of the information at the backend to make it lightweight. So that is how multimedia messaging works in case of WhatsApp or any kind of a, a Facebook messenger or any kind of an app messengers, right? So here let's talk about some of the scaling strategies. So let's take one node and based on our testing, we can understand how much connection it can withstand and how much messages it can be sending in one day, right? So now if you want to increase the number of connections or if you want to increase the number of users or if you want to increase the number of messages transferred in a day, we can proportionally increase the number of nodes, right? So that is how the number of nodes are increased based on our need and necessity. The second point here is in case of WhatsApp or in case of Facebook messengers, the number of users are constantly growing on day by day, right? So my recommendation would be to have a machine which can be processing the maximum number of users in each node. That means you should have a high capacity machine which is capable of serving high number of users at one point of time, right? So the third point I want to talk about is we should have a software built in such a way it is very loosely coupled, right? So in this case, what happens is if it is loosely coupled, if something goes down, the replacement and fixing will be very easy, right? So the fourth point I have to talk about with respect to the scaling is the software. So Erlang is a software. I will use it for chat applications. The reason is it is designed for concurrency. It is designed for scaling, low latency and fault tolerance. And it has something called hot swap. The most important thing out of this is a hot swap, right? What hot swap it means? During the runtime, you can change your application and you can deploy, right? Without any impact to the users. That is most important thing out of Erlang. So 
we can use that so that you know it won't be impacting the many users at any point of time correct so the fifth point with respect to the scaling strategies metrics you have to make sure you are getting all the information related to the cpu virtual memory hard disk capacity etc right and you have to plot a chart to understand minute by minute happening within the system right this will help you to triggering the alerts troubleshooting at the real time and also you can make sure with this data you can capture the capacity or you can build a new capacity based metrics based on the data whatever you are capturing into the application right the sixth scaling strategy is you have to monitor the messaging queue. So out of everything, the messaging queue is a very important component in your system, right? So when the messaging queue starts to grow, it gives an indication, right? Your messages are not reaching to the different users at the given point of time. That means there is a delay in sending a message and you have to make sure at this point of time, you have to add the new queue or you have to add a new system so that it can scale properly and the messages are transferred at appropriate point of time. Let's take an example in case of a new year or in case of any festivals, you could be seeing a lot of messages, right? At that point of time, you can see the number of messages getting into the queue is growing and growing. At this point of time, you had to add the new queue or you had to pre-scale your system in such a way it can send the messages without any delay to the different customers or to the different users, right? I'll talk about the follow-up interview questions in the next video. Please stay tuned. And if you have any questions or comments, Please put in the comment section. Thank you.